Hello and welcome back to the Q&A. So, as always, if you've got a question, you can leave it down in the comments of this video. In general, you know, the more broad topics are awesome, and more than just Warlords of Draenor stuff. It's, uh, it's nice to have a bit of variety, but anyway, let's get into the questions that have been left by people in previous videos. So, first of all, we've got a question from Douglas Soto who asked, What do you think the patch cycle in Warlords will be like if we do have a one-year expansion? and will it be enough time to enjoy each raid tier? So I think this is certainly a question that a lot of people are very interested in. Recently, Tom Chilton in an interview at Gamescom said that they were thinking of going for maybe, you know, a year-long expansion. And we have since found out that the team working on World of Warcraft is 50% larger than when they started Missa Pandaria. Now, in addition to that, the reason why Warlords of Draenor was delayed is so the Blizzard could essentially set up an internal pipeline where they could be working simultaneously on multiple content patches and expansions at the same time. So, assuming the system is up and running, as they say it is, we should be having a shorter turnaround on the next expansion. I think the earliest possible, or the fastest possible, expansion turnover time that we could have would be one year, and this would involve the expansion having a total of two raid tiers. So, to directly answer Douglas's question, if it was one year long and had two raid tiers, yes, I do think there would be enough time for each raid tier. You would have about six months per tier, and I think that's generally pretty okay. Usually it's it's by the sixth month that people start to get a little bit bored. Well, not a little bit, you know, they start to get quite bored of the current raid tier. Now, of course, that is bearing in mind that in between each raid tier, there's like a mid-patch, so similar to patch 5.1 or patch 5.3, just to keep people busy. I think that overall, that would be a really interesting place for the game to be. You'd be going from expansion to expansion quite, well, quite quickly, but every every three months you'd be getting new content, including a new raid every six months. I think that would be pretty awesome, actually. Now, yes, it would mean you're paying for an expansion one more time per year than you currently do. Or, you know, you're, yeah, you're paying for an expansion every year instead of once every two years. And yeah, that is more money, but I suppose it is more money for more content. If they have doubled the size of the team and they're making twice as much content, then I suppose it's, you know, it, it, it makes sense for them to release more products and more content instead of just having a year's worth of content and then nothing for a year. Yeah, I mean, I gladly come um, the you know, the sixth month um, anniversary of Siege of Orgrimmar, I would have been happy to drop £30 for a new expansion then and there so I could just get a new big thing of content. Honestly, I think it would be a far more healthy place for the game to be in and it would feel a lot more alive. It would certainly do wonders for retention. There would literally always be something to look forward to. You know, you'd always have the, uh, you know, a patch every three months and then a big expansion to look forward to. I think that would be pretty cool. And I suppose we'll just have to see how it pans out with Warlords in terms of the quality of each patch. Certainly, I think that if they do have this pipeline thing going that they've been talking about, then there shouldn't be much of a quality impact. Now the Titan's gone, um, Chris Metzen actually recently said in an interview that they are focusing on WoW more than ever. The team size has doubled. I think um, it's a feeling that I had previously, and I think a lot of people would have shared this feeling that perhaps the World of Warcraft team was a little bit understaffed a while ago. And I think that was... There was certainly a decent amount of evidence, you know? There was, like, a very long turnover time. You had the Dragon Soul wait, the Siege of Orgrimmar wait, and now it just seems like they've got a good, well-staffed team that's able to make lots of really, really fun content. I mean, certainly Warlords of Draenor so far in the beta is living proof of that. Now, in terms of the actual patch cycle of Warlords of Draenor, and specifically... I'd say what's going to happen is we'll get the Blackrock Foundry raid, then we'll get some sort of smaller patch that's more story-oriented, which will lead us into the next raid, which I'd say is just going to be the one that will deal with Garrosh. Or not Garrosh, sorry, um, Gromash. They they have said multiple times that they are certainly thinking of having Warlords of Draenor be, um, you know, a two-raid uh, two tier deal, with the second raid tier having a heavy Burning Legion influence. So, yeah, that's probably what will go on with Warlords of Draenor. Maybe, actually, yeah, I'd say that definitely there should be a interim patch after the Gromash raid. I think that would really smooth the bump into the next expansion quite well. There is one thing that I really would like, though, and that is a full-on raid tier and giant content patch set in Farallon. And it could be to do with, say, 
the Naru arriving, because, okay, yes, I know that, um, Nar you know, lore-wise, the Naru came after all the Outland stuff, but let's just say the Burning Legion kind of popped up there early due to Gul'dan, and that caused the Naru to come in their ships, or something like that, and I just think there'd be a really cool thing going on there with the Burning Legion, with all the various factions, maybe a bit of the Iron Horde, and then Tempest Keep. I think there could be some really badass stuff there, and they could totally get away with it story-wise because this is an alternate universe and stuff can happen a little bit differently. So if a year expansion did, uh, you know, mean we don't get that, then I would be pretty sad. It's hard to talk, this is all speculation, so I mean, hey, it, it's, it's all meaningless. Let's move on to the next question. This one is from Tyrion Zeren, who asks, Did we see anything about the Blade Masters on Warlords of Draenor? Don't you think this expansion would have been a nice opportunity to add this class into the game? Alright, so, from a mechanical perspective, Blade Masters are really similar to Arms Warriors. Um, yeah, like, Blade Masters generally use a two-handed blade. Okay, they've got more of um, a sort of Eastern Samurai-style theme to them, but essentially they're Arms Warriors. You know, uh, just a warrior who uses physical melee combat that is skilled with a single blade. That is what a Blade Master is, and that's also what an Arms Warrior is, which is a bit, you know, I, I just, I'm not 100% convinced they could really make this a class that feels unique and interesting. However, we do see Blade Masters in Warlords of Draenor. The Burning Blade Clan actually play a really, really large role in the Patch 5.0 weekly story quests that will be unfolding over a 16 week long period. You will be fighting their, uh, their warlord who is Azuka Blade Fury or something. Going for a little bit more of a kind of Japanese styled name there. And uh, yeah, they use katanas. They've got the little, uh, what do you call them? Like the little banner flag things that those troops used to wear on the shoulders or something. But yeah, basically you'll be fighting Blade Masters and you'll be dealing with them. And it's really cool actually. You know, I've, I've done some of their quests and it's fun. So you'll get your fix. It just won't be a new class. If you really want that fix, then I'd say just play an arms warrior and get a, a get a transmog with one of those Hanzo blades that you can find in the game. Okay, so next we've got a question from Yusagi Yojim, Yojimbo? Yojimbo? Something like that. Um, sorry if I butchered your name. And uh, Yuzaki asked, since Blizzard have started mucking around with time travel, do you think it would be plausible for a return of the High Elves? And if yes, would you like them to be Blood Elf models with blue eyes? Now, this is a good question because of High Elves, and there's a lot of uh, misinformation going on about High Elves. Lots of people say that they are the same as Blood Elves. That is false. They are different factions, and the High Elves lore-wise are actually an alliance faction. Essentially what happened is that all the Blood Elves were a bit boned after, you know, all the various events that happened to them after Warcraft 3. Now, the vast majority of them started to basically follow some of Kael'thas' teachings and they were like siphoning mana or something like that out of local wildlife and they were just generally doing kind of dickish fell magic -y things which were pretty uncool. Now, because they were so desperate, the vast majority of the population you know, they, they kind of followed Kel'thas' rebranding as Blood Elves and they did all their evil magic-y stuff. Not evil, you know, it was kind of born out of necessity. But about 10% of the population, the High Elves, basically fecked off and they said, Hey, this is bloody uncool, we're not having any part of this. They are technically, I think they're either a neutral slash alliance faction. A lot of the folks over at Dalaran are High Elves, not Blood Elves. And... Yeah, they could be another race that could be added to the game, but really, is it worth it? I mean, they are essentially just Blood Elves with a different kind of eye. So, yeah, it's maybe not worth it. Now, could they be added? Yeah, certainly. I mean, I'd say that it would be more likely in an expansion where Blizzard could overhaul races or something like that. Maybe you could just choose Elf and then be either Blood or High, brah. And if you're a High Elf, then maybe you'd have a slightly different ex like starting experience or something and... Maybe they could add, say, ogres and a few other races in and just have a one of the major expansion features be, hey, loads of new races. They could all bounce out, but you know what? I just don't, I don't see the point. As much as a new race is cool and all that, I just don't think it's really worth it because it doesn't add much gameplay. It's just kind of another skin for a character. And since that skin would be so similar to one that's already available in the game, I just don't think it's worth the resources. However, I still think that there's plenty of room for more races to be added to the game, and it would be a pretty decent main feature for a future expansion. In fact, I would bet pretty solidly that the next expansion for World of Warcraft 
will probably add a bunch of new races. I'm not sure if it would add a class. That's certainly possible, but I'd say it's definitely very likely that you're going to get two new races in the next expansion. Personally, I want Ethereals, but I don't know how they could actually add Ethereals to the game. I just know they look cool and I want one. But yeah, that's it for that question. Finally, we've got a short question from Stannis Baratheon. Probably not the real Stannis Baratheon, considering he's actually a fictional character, but nonetheless, Stannis asked if an underwater Zangar Sea zone similar to Vashir could have worked out if Blizzard would have sorted out the underwater movement and combat mechanics. All right, so I'd say, yeah, it probably could have worked out. Vashir was generally fine for me, but I think that the WoW combat system in a 3D space doesn't really work. I mean, most of our combat does happen on a flat plane, not really a sort of 3D thing where you have to think about things that are above you or behind you. So essentially making it work in WoW would just be a case of, well, yeah, it would just be a case of making it be underground, but essentially, or underwater, but essentially just always on the sea floor. Now they could just leave it the same way that Vashir was and then ensure that various class abilities would work right. Obviously, you know, say things like deterrence and a heroic leap and various abilities were a bit strange in Vashir, but overall, I think that Vashir was something that was quite divisive. Some people just, their head said no and they couldn't enjoy it, and then some people did enjoy it. Personally, I was pretty much in the middle. I thought Vashir was a bit too long. That was my main problem with it. It was more of a pacing issue. I thought it was perfectly playable, but ultimately, I think that their efforts would best be spent elsewhere. Now, if you are interested in seeing Zanger Marsh style things in Warlords of Draenor, don't worry, there are actually a few parts of the world which have just got, you know, the mushrooms and the shiny things. In fact, Khadgar's base of operations is essentially a miniature Zanger Marsh. So there's definitely plenty of stuff there for you. Anyway, that's basically it for today's Q&A. Be sure to leave any questions that you might have in the comments of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.